Hello everyone, my name is Glitch. Welcome to a behind the scenes look at Glitch Intended Gaming. I decided to put together a few videos, this being the first one, concerning the process that I use to both create my content, edit it, and put it out there on YouTube. Now one of the reasons for this is in the description on my YouTube channel, you may notice that I say I never intended to become a gamer. I actually started my channel as part of a di class in digital communications that I took as an elective in university. I had so much fun with the learning process of uh, creating the content and editing that I decided to keep it going as a hobby. Now one factor that played into that was the fact that I, the computer I currently have was never designed around gaming or recording. So through trial and error I have worked out how to put together content at a minimum budget and also find different tools that are either uh, at a minimum cost or they're free to use. So I decided to put these videos together in the hopes that they will help someone who's just starting out and doesn't have a budget for high-end software such as uh, Adobe products or anything like that. Now, this uh, one copy I do want to throw out there is that these settings may change over time as I learn, but at present, this is the this is the uh, the process that I use. So for this video, we're going to look at the settings I use in my recording software. Uh, my computer is a Lenovo IdeaPad, and it has eight gigs of RAM and no graphics card to speak of. So what I do is I use OBS software, uh, and that is open source recording software. It is free, and I will link a uh, leave a link in the description below so that you can download and try it out. It can have a bit of a learning curve, but there are plenty of tutorials on YouTube that will help you get started with it and learning how to use the actual uh, software, things like setting up scenes and getting your uh, audio settings the way you like. Today we're also not going to be looking at audio settings because uh, I have found that those vary drastically uh, between the devices that you're using, so we'll cover that in a separate video. But with that being said, let's go ahead and take a look at the settings I use. So here in the settings, we you have your general settings, which pretty much I never touch. If you want to enable a light mode or anything like that, that is personal preference. Uh, and also in this video, we're not going to really be looking at the stream settings. At present, I do not stream. I do want to look at that down the road but I am not doing it at this time. So for my purposes, I leave this tab alone. And also when it comes to the uh, output tab, I leave the streaming alone because I don't use it. Now for the recording, you want to go into your advanced uh, settings and then you're going to want to take the type and keep it at standard. Your recording path is whatever you choose. I use a, I have a dedicated, um, I have a dedicated folder within my documents that uh, all of my raw material goes into, and then I will create a subfolder to go ahead and put it in. For example, I will create the content, it will go into the Glitch Intended Gaming folder, and then if it's an episode of Deja Vu Survival, I'll then create a subfolder for that, drop it in there, and then that'll be there when I go to edit. Um, then when you have your recording format, you can choose whichever you prefer. I prefer the MP4 because I feel the quality is better. This does, of course, caveat, come with the caveat that if anything goes wrong during the recording process, you will lose that data and the data is unusable. Uh, you can, if you want, use the FLV format, uh, which has a little is a little more forgiving that way. However, that is a matter of personal preference. Feel free to try either one. For the audio track, you'll want to leave just the one set, it, uh, the, it's set at one. If you want to do multiple tracks, you can. I don't within my recordings. I will add any music that I want to in post-production. For your encoder, you want to go with X264. 
your rescale output is something you don't want to mess with. And then when you come down, your rate control is going to be CBR. The bit rate is going to be 10,000. And that's subject to some trial and error, but that seems to work for my purposes. Your keyframe interval, leave it zero. Your CPU usage preset, I leave at ultra fast, which is the highest setting. The reason for that is, is because as it says right here, the higher you set it, the less CPU you are using. And if you don't have a graphics card to fall back on, that allows you to free up the space on your CPU to run the game and the recording software. Profile, you can leave it none. Tune, you can leave it none. And then the X264 options, you can also leave uh, empty. Uh, for your audio, don't forget to set up your microphone. You'll notice that uh, these are not connected. And the reason I did that is was I don't want to confuse the two instances of OBS that I'm running right now to record this video uh, by putting my, uh, my Corsair voids on both of them at once. Now here's what made the biggest difference. When you come into your uh, video, you want to set your base canvas resolution to whatever your monitor is. So in my case, the 1280 by 720 is the closest setting to the monitor to the uh, monitor on my laptop. Then when you come down to your output or scaled resolution, you want to go ahead and either go with 960 by 540, or let's drop that down. Let's drop that down. There we go. Or you can also go with the uh, 852 by 480. Now I know that may sound low, but that actually matches up with standard definition video. And what I found is by shooting in standard definition, you can bridge the gap in, it, in it, the video quality when you go to edit your software. So for now, we'll go, so go ahead and leave that as standard definition. For the downscale filter, I find the best one of the, uh, the options you have is the bicubic. And then for your common FPS value, you want to try and leave it at 24, which is equal to NTSC format. Again, standard definition. Uh, you can, I have been able to get it up to 30 uh, FPS. However, if there are a lot of mobs on the screen, I do notice significant amount of stuttering in the video. So that's why I leave it down there. So that is a basic look at the settings I use for my recording software. Down the road, we'll look at other aspects of the recording process, such as the editing software and how I build my thumbnails. But for now, I hope you found this information useful and that if you're just starting out, it encourages you that you can do this without incurring a ton of cost. If you like this video, please consider giving it a like and also consider subscribing if you want to see more content like this. My name is Glitch and I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.